Hello, thank you for tuning in today to hear us speak about our recently published AGA clinical practice update on diet and nutritional therapies in patients with IBD, which will be available in print and gastroenterology this month. My name is Jana Hashash, and I am a gastroenterologist with a focus on inflammatory bowel diseases from the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm very lucky to be accompanied by my author, Dr. David Binion, today, who is a gastroenterologist and co-director of the IBD Center and director of the Nutrition Support Service at the University of Pittsburgh. So Dr. Binion, can you please share with our listeners a few words about what makes this clinical practice update valuable and what makes it different from other published data on the role of diet and inflammatory bowel disease? Thank you, Dr. Hashash. I think we tried to make a very pragmatic document that will help practicing gastroenterologists really understand some of the nuances and perhaps the complexities when it comes to diet and nutrition for our patients with inflammatory bowel disease. I think we can all agree that diet is essential for health, but it's oftentimes quite challenging for patients with IBD to eat a healthy diet because their GI tract is injured. That's really one of the core limitations of inflammatory bowel disease. And I think we tried really hard to come up with practical information and guidance that really harmonizes some of these concepts. And I think the document will definitely be of interest to the gastroenterology community. And I think it will have some very, very pragmatic and helpful strategies that can be easily identified and recognized by the readership. Can you comment a little bit about take-home strategies to maintain IBD in remission and what dietary interventions to implement when patients develop flare-ups of their disease? I think there is actually quite strong evidence from our colleague, Dr. Uh, Dr. Lewis, that a Mediterranean diet, a diet which emphasizes fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, um, lean protein, typically in the form of fish and poultry, um, perhaps a reduction in saturated fats, a reduction in ultra processed foods, sugar and salt, and red meat, is a very, very healthy diet for all Americans, but particularly patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Now, the challenge is that many patients with IBD have been told to stay away from fruits, vegetables, perhaps fiber in their diet, because it could be hard to tolerate during flare-ups of illness. And also if there perhaps is a stricture in the lumen of the GI tract. And we tried to address that concept in the, the best practice advice by really putting an emphasis on texture modification for patients who are experiencing those problems. So you can have strategies to eat a healthy diet. You just have to make sure you chew things up really well. If you cook things thoroughly, perhaps if you use a blender to make a smoothie, you can enjoy those fresh fruits and vegetables that we would all agree are, are really important for people to stay healthy. Now, we also covered more uh, specific scenarios. There is emerging data in pediatrics that the use of liquid nutrition formulas, basically liquid nutrition as a strategy to replace food for perhaps the first two months of therapy in the care of children and adolescents has been pretty compelling. It will induce rates of remission equivalent to prednisone. And this is something that our pediatric colleagues have really explored pretty thoroughly. The adult GI community may not be as familiar with these concepts. And I think this is a good uh, entree into those concepts. Liquid nutrition can definitely be used successfully in people with strictures. It can be used as a strategy to supplement nutrition in patients who are heading to surgery when it would otherwise be pretty hard to tolerate a regular diet. Thank you, Dr. Benny, and thank you for the great summary. And we hope that our uh, listeners and readers would enjoy the AGA clinical practice update on the role of diet and nutritional therapies in patients with inflammatory bowel disease.